All right, now we're ready to move on to our next speaker. Bea Alfar Everdones, the Creative Communicator who leads operations, creative content strategy, and business development for a public group of companies as its group chief operating officer and creative strategist. In 2021, she led the launch of G-Spot, an online platform that talks about the everyday Bisaya woman. She also founded Queen City Plus, a self-love and body positivity online platform that executes campaigns to urge women to love themselves beyond their imperfections. She has been featured in different blogs, articles, radio interviews, and have TV appearances, as well as invitations to speak for various events including the prestigious TED Talks. Bayer recently led the production of Bicon Infest, the biggest gathering of online content creators and influencers in the Philippines. In January 2020, Bayer was elected founding director and executive secretary of the Creators and Influencers Council of the Philippines, the country's most influential gathering of content creators in the world of marketing. Join her as she uncovers how Abisaya continues to break through in digital advertising. Streaming live from Cebu City, Philippines, ladies and gentlemen, Bea Evardone. Mayong hapon kaninyong tanan. Hello, mayong hapon. As mentioned, my name is Bea Alfaro Evardone. I'm the current Group Chief Operating Officer and Head of Creative Strategy of Visayas and Mindanao's largest digital agency called the Republic Group of Companies. We are a seven-year-old company with more than 100 employees now. What we do, we specialize in providing platforms and services to include the Visayas and Mindanao region in brand campaigns and to also create platforms that will showcase the talent and culture that we have here in Visayas and Mindanao. And so far, we've been successful in doing so. You might be wondering, at only seven years old, how can this company led by a young Cebuana get an agency to where it is today? The simple answer is, I do not lead it. At least I'm not alone in leading it. It really does take a village and the credit goes to them. But being born into a matriarchal household and having gone to an all girls school all my life, I really think that um, my personal values discipline and principles as a woman have helped me mold the direction of the company that we have now. But it wasn't always easy. Simply by being who I am, I encountered a lot of challenges. I was only 26 years old when I became the company COO. So my first challenge was that I was too young. Second, and as we all know, the advertising world is dominated by men. And so my next challenge would be, I am a woman. The third one is that I come from a place, a city that has always come second to the capital, a city that has been on the other end or the receiving end of misrepresentation or worse, lack of representation. I come from Cebu, now I'm a Bisaya. And that became my third challenge. I am a Bisaya. These are challenges that I have been facing and quite honestly, still continue to face today. But here I am still standing and waving the flag of a young Messiah woman in every single presentation, encounter, and opportunity to be represented in the world of media and advertising. Let's talk about each of my challenges and what I told myself to be able to overcome them. First, I am young. In 2017, I 26 years old, I was given the role of the chief operating officer of a then 30-man company. And I was a walking millennial cliche. Young and full of ideas, driven, passionate, and I worked like crazy. I got to the office at 9, 9 a.m. and would often go home at 2 a.m. Not that I'm glorifying overworking or anything, but we were in the planting phase of the company and I wore multiple hats. I led operations. I led accounts management, I contributed in strategy, and even developed the very first company evaluation process for RGC since we did not have any HR then. I even became a talent in some of the projects. I was a host, I was a radio talent, I 
wore a lot a lot of hats basically and quite honestly i would confidently say that i knew with all the ins and outs of the company and every single project to part because i was very much involved in it and yet with all of this when i enter the boardroom ready to give my pitch i have had so many instances where i was consciously ignored talked over or worse questioned how can this 26 year old girl know what she's talking about they'd acknowledge me in pleasantly hi you're pretty hello it's nice to see you but when it comes to the more serious discussion i wasn't the one they turned to it was always my male boss and partner i even tried to change the way i look i wanted to look older i wore lots of dresses i even wore thicker makeup for me to look older just so i could be taken seriously but then i realized why should being young be put in such a bad light? Because being young meant having access to the latest trends in my industry because I myself am a digital native. Being young meant having fresh ideas and the energy to actually pursue them. I have a whole life ahead of me and being young should not stop me. So in situations where I told myself that I was too young for anything, you know, I told myself, yes, I'm too young, but my age should never be a hindrance to succeed. So now, at age of 29, my 30-man team is now a team of 105, and we've expanded extremely fast thanks to my young team, led by a young and enthusiastic COO like me. So yes, I am young, but that only means I'm full of energy to make things happen. My next challenge, I was a woman, and this challenge was never direct. No one said it to my face that I was incapable because I am a woman, but I felt it. There were situations where I really felt it. Many clients and partners I've encountered knew that I was strong, empowered, and outspoken, and so they'd never belittle me to my face. You know what? There were phone calls made behind my back, emails I wasn't copied in, and it was mainly because for them, women took too long to decide. Women were too emotional to make decisions, or women's feelings might get hurt whenever we're making choices. Little did they know that in these instances, when they tried to move things around behind my team and members will still run to me and approach me for advice, for guidance. And with that woman's help, that very woman that you excluded from the narrative, from the conversation, from making the decision, at the end of the day, was still the one who made things happen. I'm sure other women out there are having it worse. And to you, I say, keep your chin up. Continue to make things happen. Women take too long to make decisions. <laughs> no, it just means that we know the value of every decision that has to be made. Women are emotional. Why do you say that like it's a bad thing? It just means that we also use our heart in the objective decisions that we are making. Women's feelings get hurt. Men's, get, uh, men's feelings get hurt. Women get hurt. Basically, everyone's meant to get hurt we're humans and we're wired that way and getting hurt is not an excuse to exclude women from decisions from the narrative so yes i am a woman i am a woman that is the very reason why i will succeed simply because i am a woman and finally my last challenge isaya ka the internet ba sa inyo how do you go from one place to the other? Do you have a car in Cebu? Ah, taga Cebu, Provinciana. Mayaya is also Provinciana. You must be related to her. Uh, so you guys have parties in Cebu, like in basketball courts? Or do you know a thing called clubs? It sounds ridiculous. It sounds ridiculous. It's 2022. And yes, I still hear this. And I don't entirely blame the people who think this way. Because back in 2016, when I would search for the word Bisaya online, all I would see would be parodies and, you know, fun videos of people making fun of each other. And, of course, because the main source of information nowadays would be the internet, it was very clear that the Bisayas were misrepresented online. Since then, that different disabilities dedicated to truly showcasing the business culture in that there is a lot. 
that we are more than just the funny house helps or the yayas that most TV shows and movies would present Bisaya as to be. We built a media channel showcasing the Bisaya culture, mounted events, and thought leadership pieces to show the growth of the Bisman region. And as a market, we have shown and convinced brands that we are more than just having to literally translate campaigns. We're more than that. We deserve more than that. We were ignored, rejected so many times, underestimated too, when we joined pitches um, that included other big agencies. I'd feel the gap between our small agency versus the national and multinational companies that we were working with. A lot of them would say, RGC? Who is this agency? They have no clue. And half the time, to be honest, I personally also wouldn't have a clue why I was there. But I pushed, and it's okay. We were well aware that we were far from what a national and multinational agency could actually provide. But my being a Bisaya and running Bisaya company did not stop me to keep pushing forward. And so I did. Today, we've won a couple of pitches against the other agencies we've looked up to, thanks to our greatest edge in pitching, the pulse of the Bisman market. Brands also come to us for their Bisman campaigns way more than ever. This means that finally, the Bisman market is finally getting the attention it deserves. Because more than just literally translating campaigns and ads, they now approach us. We're always on campaigns all year round. That is an amazing milestone in the advertising industry here in the Philippines. Yes, I'm a Bisaya. And yes, we have been excluded and misrepresented in different campaigns for a long time. My being a Bisaya, I made it my greatest strength in the industry that I am in today. My being Bisaya got me to where I am. My name is Bea Alfaro Bardone. I am young, and only a few people believe me. I'm a woman. I was once discriminated for it, excluded from conversations. I'm a Bisaya, and I was underestimated. Good thing that's all in the past now, not affected by it anymore. Because after years of perseverance and experiences today, I can proudly say, I am young. But that means I have a long way to go and have the energy to get there. I am a woman. And that's why, that's all the reason I need to keep going. And I am a Bisaya. And that will remain my anchor to keep pushing forward because I never let any label stop you from achieving your goals. Sometimes these labels and weaknesses can become your strength. Keep going, girl. You can do it. Happy International Women's Month. Maayong hapon kaninyong tanan.